Get in a gate. This is episode 36. We are talking the fifth race. Uh, we are the full Get in the Gate team. My name is Mitch, joined by Matty Gibson. Yo, yo. Brendan Gibson. Hello. And Reese. Gibson. Hi there. For anyone who did join us uh, last week, there's a bit of a question mark over which one we were going to talk about this week, fifth race or a matter of time. And we did put up a uh, Twitter poll. So a very big What a response. To... Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot to say, man. Stargate fans are pretty passionate, as we found out. So the fifth race gets the uh, gets the vote this week to, to talk about first, which, depending on where you read, is actually the episode that came first anyway. So mm. arguments aside, let's get into the fifth race. Uh, now, if you are new to Get In The Gate, we are three Stargate veterans. We're introducing Reese. He's a first-time viewer to the show. He's watching it through some fresh eyes. Maddie, Brendan, and I, old-school fans, uh, we're going to break it down along with him. And uh, let's go to, as we have been doing, the DVD synopsis to find out what the fifth race, which I feel like we've been teasing this for a long time. Oh, mate. Because you're excited. I'm you're normally... Exci- I'm, you're excited. Feel these nipples type stuff. You know? <laughs> I'm normally jealous of Reese because he gets to experience these episodes for the first time mm. over and over again. No matter how many times I watch the fifth race, it's like I'm watching it the first time every time. I found that too, yeah. so just gives me a hard on. Like, it's so good <laughs> that yeah. I'm actually not jealous of Reese for once because it's every time I watch it, I just feel like it's the first time. Yeah. Every time. You, you know what? For me, like, I watched this to write some notes about the episode and then I was re-watching it just to go through it again, just to just to gather my thoughts for it. And as I'm watching it, my two kids who are f- four and five are like, oh, what happened to him when he grabbed his head? And yeah. I'm like, oh, well, I'll tell you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start from episode one, and then, season and one. Then when they're back, <laughs> Sit down, children. I'll tell you the story of how I met your mother. <laughs> and when, and when, Jack's, when they're back on the base and Jack starts talking, weird Badana comes in, she's just... She's kind of walk. My wife walks through the room, my and wife. stops, and just stares at the TV for a good five minutes. She goes, "Is he about to lose the capacity to speak English?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's gonna be so good." <laughs> this is why I love coming home to my family. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, family. <laughs> Complete me. Uh, Matty mm. just fell off his chair on my yeah. <laughs> Is that breath, hard on? Is that damn hard on? It's screwing up your weight balance. <laughs> All right, here we go. While studying alien wall inscriptions on another planet, O'Neill peers into a viewer that unleashes ancient knowledge into his mind. But the information is infecting O'Neill's brain like a cancer, and the SG-1 team must reverse the process before his mind is completely reconfigured. This inscription's got tiny writing on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an awesome episode. Yeah, oh, man. Oh. Oh. On. How cool is it, man? Easily so in the good. top 10 SG-1 episodes of all time. Yeah. Eas- just easily. Just any top 10 you'll see, this will be in I don't it, even think we come doubt. out of the fade from black and you got Daniel there standing. The talk, he goes, now, of course, when we went and found Old Mate on Heliopolis and there was all this matter, a meaning of life stuff, and I'm like, oh, yeah, we're in for yeah, some shit. Here we go. Like, yeah. we haven't even seen the character talking and that we're already getting so much yeah. information. Mm. This is going to be good. And Mate. Aaron's like, we all read the briefing. <laughs> My like, shut up, Daniel. Shut up. My <laughs> <laughs> How good was that? It's just <laughs> like, all right, we don't need a recap yeah. for, the, for the viewers. I, I, um, I got a picture here. When Daniel's doing his presentation, she's got the old OHP. Yeah. The overhead projector. I'm like, oh my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Primary school yeah, stuff. Yes. He had so the VHS as, later on as well. <laughs> yeah. The VHS take. Now, my job here is to pull all the audio stuff from, from each episode for us to play every week. I didn't know what to do here. Mm. Like, I could have just grabbed the entire episode and just played <laughs> yeah. it. Like, yeah. just everything was... I just didn't know. It like, could have been just... an experimental episode of Get In A Gate where we just play the episode and mm. just talk over just it talk, like a director's commentary. Do our own commentary. audio yeah. commentary, yeah. Because <laughs> it was just... I've got that audio of Daniel's, you know, all him chatting and, and the, Hammond asking about it. And he's just like, I've got no idea. I haven't even assigned sounds to the symbols. Mm. Like, he just, yeah. you know... Oh, just everything is so... Well paced, well written. Mm. It just oh, who who wrote it? Who wrote it again? Can't remember. <laughs> yeah, look when was I saw the, that pop up, the man, <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, this is the episode that comes to mind when Brendan first told us he had you know back in 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 the pilot when he talked about the issues he had with Robert Cooper. Mm. This is the episode that I associate with him the most, and that's why I was so perplexed and being like, why does he hate Robert Cooper so much? But I don't now know. you know. 
I don't get it. Yeah, well, but, yeah, but still... the question it begs the question, why do you associate this episode with him the most? It's because you love the episode, not because, because you love him as a writer. Yeah, but but that's the thing is this episode is so good. I associate yeah. him with this episode yeah. and go, oh, Robert C. Cooper, yeah, he's a really good writer. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it really took me back when Brendan was so sort of anti-Cooper. Yeah. Because this episode is just so phenomenal. And then obviously there's another episode um, in a few seasons time, which is almost like a part two to this, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, the Lost World, which is... Lost City. Lost City, sorry. Which is potentially probably the number one episode of the entire series. Yeah. You know, mm. it's not... That just, was written by Brad And Wright. it's like, I can't I can't actually oversell it by saying that. Like, yeah. I still, I've still undersold it by saying it's the best episode of Stargate SG-1 ever. Yeah. Like and this one, um, directed by David Worry Smith, he's got a few good credits to his name for Stargate. Mm. Like, he directed the, the season finale last season, season one, and I think yeah. a, a couple others either side of that that have been pretty key episodes, not only of the show, but, like, story-wise. Like, pace setters, like this, fifth race, like, this is putting shit into place that changes what the show is about yeah. and where yeah. it can go. So he's got he's got some good pedigree behind him. But I found the same thing. I read Robert C. Cooper and I'm like, wow, single writing credit. Um, I remember really liking this episode. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm going to do... I don't do know where to go from is, here. ...is watch it from a point of loving it and try to find the Cooperisms about it <laughs> yeah. that I can pick from. No, there aren't, there aren't. There, there were any. no but alien really, bugs. No. no. There was no tyr- tyrannical crazy dude in with sunburn. <laughs> with unexplained motives. Yeah. You know? Hey, you know, I mean, if, if you look at this and Lost City... There is that classic Cooper just repeating stuff. Like, yeah. like there is that, but this is this is his first crack at it. Yeah, and I feel like this is you know this is an amazing. No, you got to give the man crack. some credit, especially. Hey, whoa, 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 the whoa, whoa! What did you just say? <laughs> Can we have that audio on a loop and just play it? Every the continuity episode? in the when they go to the alien planet and Tilk walks through the circle, and it doesn't initiate that the does head nothing. looks into the the head grabber thing yeah. as well. And it was just, yeah. He says he sees. Blackness, blackness with lights. Yeah. So he see he sees the exact same mm. thing Jack sees, yeah. but nothing downloads into his brain. Until Jack walks through the circle mm. and then he can look into it. I'm like, yeah. ah. So it's clearly very similar to, you know, Thor's hammer. It it recognized Tilk as a as a Jafar. Mm. Went, mm. I ain't giving you shit, buddy. Mm. <laughs> you you holding a gould, son. Yeah. I but feel I, like we but I feel though, I'm probably gonna talk too far ahead for you guys, but if McKay walked through this at this point in time, not having an inoculation through that circle, it wouldn't have he wouldn't have been able to look into it. Potentially, yeah. yeah. If if we're assuming that it's that it's ATA gene yeah. relevant. Yeah. Or whether it is very similar to Thor's hammer in that it just recognizes just, yeah. Guauld and, and people like that that are the unfriendlies yep. and says, I ain't giving you shit, buddy. But I like to think about it like yeah. that. You it it all still and works. And then obviously yeah. you look at um, heading towards the end of the episode, the the little contraption that that Jack makes yeah. is kind of a proto single use ZPM. Yeah, that's yeah. So, cool. so it's you know very very cool that way. Could that be used again though? If you if it's a disposable, but the little um, thing he got out of the staff weapon, the staff weapon, could, couldn't he just get one of those and recharge it? Is that the energy? I thing think they that... tried to. Yeah, <laughs> I think was it cool for you to be able to like see inside a staff weapon? For... I thought of you oh, straight man. away. When he opens whole, up a staff weapon. This whole fucking episode was just cool, <laughs> Yeah, man. like your staff when, weapon when, opened up as you're watching the staff weapon open when, up. When, that, when he walked through the circle and that thing come out the wall, I'm like, don't look into that. That's going to kill <laughs> yeah. you, man. What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, like, you that. don't just do this it shit looks on like different planets. It's like a giant planets. anus. Don't yeah, look into yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and and, got, then, and then, then when it does grab him, it's a giant anus with hands. Like that thing <laughs> that grabs him looks like closed hands around the back of his head. It is the stuff of nightmares. It is the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> but I felt like no one was really concerned about O'Neill until that anus face grabber let him go. Yeah. Like, mm. they were kind of just standing there. Yeah. Like, oh. And he sat there and he's screaming. Yeah, and no this, one's and doing he's anything. And he's Mechanical. Twisting. It wasn't like they would have been easily able to rip it back like it was a real pair of hands. And then it drops him and it's like, Colonel! It's like, and then they what have you been doing side. for the last They literally seconds. didn't move, huh? Yeah. No. Yeah. But then when he came back to Earth and he's like just using random words in God, place of that. normal. Yeah, oh, I love that. So brilliant. He's, he's just the way he does it. So good. You just said there's nothing crevice with you. I did not. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Didn't. Did. Didn't. Did. Crevice. What is that? <laughs> like, and to me, that? that is. Sound like that? Chandler for friends. Yeah. Yeah. Crevice, what, is what is that? <laughs> that right there is like a microcosm of this entire show. It's fast paced dialogue back and forth between Jack and Daniel. 
Like yeah. that mm. to me, that's the heart and of the I'll, show. And I like the editing of that shot too because it goes to one shot of of Hammond and he looks at Daniel and looks back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and then comes to Carter and she's yeah. saying... <laughs> Clever yeah. editing. And just that, you know, this, this army colonel, Black Ops army colonel, is having a did no, didn't argument <laughs> yeah. with Daniel of all You know people. what I thought too? Yeah. My, one of my first thoughts when he started saying shit like that was Trump. Because I'm thinking of him writing that yeah. tweet the other week. Uh, Despite all the media t- attention, Kofefe. Yeah. Like, has, has he seen an ancient thing? Has he got an alien knowledge? Probably not the peanut. But yeah. I'll just wait for Jack to Kofefe. Like, oh, there what? it is, the reference. <laughs> but then when he, he came back and then starts reading the... Yeah, that's the best bit. Uh, yeah. Off the computer screen and he's like... On anyone to eat us or whatever yeah. he says. Yeah. yeah. And, he what? And, he's, and he has no idea what's going on. I'm like, this is so cool. It's yeah. just like putting a USB in your neck and be like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, give me all the info. Yeah. And then fully, man, like everything he was doing was just to get to where he ended up through that Stargate. He's like full recoding the whole supercomputer. Yeah. And they're like, oh, stop that. Nah, best you let him go. And he's just yeah. recoding. And then builds and a machine, gets through. And then when um, old bloody Lieutenant Pretty Boy is on the um, machine, he's like, Chevron 7, encoded? <laughs> And I'm just like, oh shit, what? <laughs> no, there is number eight. We're going further and further out of this guy. And then, and then he's just like straight out. And then I don't know why Daniel didn't go with him. Like, oh, I think he needs to do this alone. And I'm like, no, go with, like, this is, this is what you love, Meaning Jackson. Of life stuff, go yeah. through yeah. it with him. I think but it's then, because he didn't have a, couldn't give him a GDO. Yeah, to come back. Yeah, true. So Daniel's like, yeah, I like you. Yeah, but, but it was only like dang- you that much. Yeah. It was only dangerous in O'Neill's, O'Neill's hands. hands if yeah. Jackson had it, like, mm. fine. But then he, he, when he went there, and then, and then they all, uh, all the bloody ETs come out. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. on seven. Is it encoded? And it's not the point of origin. What, General? What if all these anomalies that have been happening, to Jack, are part of some big plan? What plan? Well, earlier, Jack was telling me he had to go through the gate. Maybe everything up until now has been leading to this. What's it doing? Chevron 8 is locked. Wormhole is tracking. Captain? Sir, the computer indicates that the wormhole is leaving our known network of stargates. It's going outside of our galaxy. Far out. Because yeah, he flies through that gate as well, like at a velocity, doesn't he? He comes rolling down. Yeah, well, we get, oh, that, yeah, we get totally. the really extended scene of gate travel. Yeah. Like really We're... long. and It even cuts back to like the SGC and, and Pretty Boy faces there going... Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, that was a reference to um, <laughs> something off air three bottle. weeks ago. Message, message in a bottle. Message in a bottle. Um, but then, and then it shows us instead of just going through the wormhole, it shows us like a hyperspeed yeah, through like the, the event, galaxy. Then collapses down and then it yeah, just... yeah. Oh, that was me. Sorry. And then, um, <laughs> and then yeah, he the shoots first out. Time we, last time we saw that, I think it was in the movie. They have that in the movie. Yeah, yeah that well. super oh, long true. sequence. Yeah, cross. Ga- oh, I couldn't believe yeah. it, man. I'm just like, oh yeah. shit. Because especially when he was recoding it and all those new gates were popping up. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, what is going on? Because when he first come back and started saying the random words, I'm like, oh, this isn't O'Neill. Like, this is an alien that's just like... Ah. Yeah, and yeah. then and then um, Buddy Hammond's like, well, stay on base, but, you know, go over the rest. I'm like, lock him up, man. Like, he, he's going to take over this place. Yeah. But then, yeah, yeah went back and then and then saw the little, little ET guys. And then, yeah, just like simple as that, puts his hand out, takes all the information yeah. out. And he's like, oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and Shakes hands with him. The music and then, in there was so cool, like the spine tingling music yeah. as, as, he, yeah. like, as he rolls through. And he's like, oh, you know, we're a curious race. And they go, yeah, you're well on the way to being the fifth race. I'm oh, like, my oh, God. shit, that's us. That's <laughs> us. <laughs> we, that's us. That's, we're the fifth race. Mate, that is li- that's exactly like the, oh, the experience man. everyone has the first yeah. time this episode. So it's awesome. so good. Like it just... It just makes you feel like a little warm and fuzzy inside. You <laughs> yeah. just go, oh, snap, that's oh, us. God, I ha- I, I'm so happy you had that reaction because I, when we've mentioned this episode in, in, in past weeks and we said, oh, wait till you get to the fifth race. And yeah. obviously the four races, the four races is such a term they've been throwing out yeah. since... Um, Torment no, of Tantalus. Torment, Torment of yeah. Tantalus. I've worried every time we've said the fifth race that you're going to put two and two together. Mm. And it's the fact that this happens, you're just like, ah! 
hard yeah. as us. This is like the bit, like even like, like, you, what you've just done is recap the entire episode, and I haven't been sick of listening for <laughs> no. one second because you are other- so. Get excited! <laughs> this is why we're doing the show. Because the to other, see that on his face. When I first started getting excited, it was when the the gate started dialing itself. I'm like, oh shit, he's gonna go, he's gonna go off well. Like he's going yeah. somewhere that nobody yeah. knows where it's going. Obviously, when he was typing in all those addresses, you just think that's what he's doing. But he's obviously putting in the program like a timer to, download to dial everything. up the eight the eight Chevron yeah, address. Yeah. But in the that, meantime, he's got to go and make the power source so that it can actually dial. So yeah. it's like he's like he's playing chess. And he's like, oh, he, while I'm here, I'm just gonna give you another. A whole bunch yeah. of gates yeah. to go he's like to. And he doesn't even know he's doing it. And he doesn't even know. Doesn't even know he's doing it. And then, because at first I'm like, oh, someone's dialing in. I'm like, oh, wait. And then they're like, no, this, we're, we're dialing out. Yeah. And I'm like, who is doing this? This is this is nuts. And then when he goes, <laughs> when he said Chev- Chevron 7 encoded, I'm like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> yeah. This is just hectic. <laughs> like, well, I'll put another area code on that shit. Yeah. We're going in a state. <laughs> <laughs> and then it kept building from there. That's what I loved. Like, how it was good just, was the pacing? Yeah, just, you didn't have a minute to sit with it. You were just it just kept going up and up and up, and up, and then escalating, and then just the the blow moment. Yeah, you, you're the fifth race. Oh, and shit. then to still have time to have such a funny scene like um, Teal and Jack boxing. Yeah. Like, yeah, how good time was that? for that? <laughs> ben Jacosa. Ben Jacosa. Knocked yes. him out. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you're right. I'm fine. <laughs> you ain't you ain't hurting me, old man. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, and we also learnt the four the other four races. Yes. Yeah. So, so this the, is something that I've been teasing you about since Torment of Tandor yeah, when we yeah. saw all those languages up on the walls. Asgard, Nox, Furling Furlings and the Ancients. Yeah. And then when I was listening back to last week's episode, I remember you saying, Oh, we haven't I haven't met haven't those met guys them. yet, which is what Jack said. Yeah. But then I'm like, those I don't know, are they are they the the ones from spirits? They might be the ones from spirits because they didn't give us a name or blah blah blah. But yeah, well, we obviously yeah. So we've met the Nox, yeah. uh, we've met the Asgard, yeah, and then yeah, the Ancients we haven't met yet, but they're obviously the Gate Builders, yeah. So they've got to be pretty. And then yeah, and then there's the, the there's the Furlings. So yeah, that was a bit of info I had last week with Touchstone, yeah, where potentially the Furlings were the were the were the people who terraformed that world and gave them the little the little uh, yeah, thing. But yeah. that's like a, just in a book somewhere. Yeah. It's not potentially canon or anything like that. Because, no spoilers, but we really don't... We, we get to spend a lot of time with, you know, the Ancients and the Asgard and stuff like that, but we never really spend any time with the Furlings. Because they, yeah, okay. they are an ancient race, so it does make sense that they potentially could be extinct, you know, given that how many yeah, thousands yeah, yeah. of years back this, this alliance of four goes. Yeah. So And um, basically the alliance is just to come up against the guy world, isn't it? Yeah, and it's obviously these four benevolent... At this stage, pretty much. Yeah, these yeah. four all benevolent races know. who yeah. are coming together not as like a military alliance to rule the universe. It's four races coming together to share information and, yeah. and ideals and, you know... For United for, Nations. For good, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Me, oh, no, life no. stuff. What did he say? <laughs> United Nations of the stars. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the idea, though, that, you know, he says to him, you're becoming the fifth race. Yeah. And only I just oh, go, sploosh. Oh, shit, I guess we better stop blowing up mountains to steal yeah. rocks. <laughs> you don't know about that. Well, we're going to keep yeah. that shit quiet. <laughs> that might lose us a few points. Yeah. We're out there. Now. The, the music yeah. in the in the back of all that stuff mm. on, on Othala and and just the the two Asgard, you know, side by side chatting and they're really distinct voices. Yeah. And, and yeah, they just had this very grand nature about them. And it's just how they worked things out so quickly. Like, oh, he's a human from Earth, but he's talking our language, like, yeah. oh, the ancient oh. language. Like, oh, he must have the ancient language in his head. I'll use my little yeah. thing in my yeah. palm to take <laughs> There was no confusion. They just knew everything. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's just, yeah. oh, yeah, let's just take four seconds to work this out. Well, it's all about quickly. Like, when he punched all that shit into the computer and gave them, like, hundreds, thousands, maybe more mm. new gate systems to uh, to travel to. And then Carter came in and uh, a little bit later and said, "Hey, uh, with all those new gates that that I that Jack gave us, um, we've been going through them to see whether we can find anything you know that might relate to what's going on with him. We think we've yeah. found something." And I'm like, "That's quick! Like if he's just giving you thousands, like usually they would give you the probability or the the <laughs> percentage yeah. number or something of how unlikely they are to find something when they go looking through gates, which they have done before. Like when they were looking for them when they were lost in the Antarctic, they were like, well, "We can punch in any number of 
Stargate, but yeah. it's going to take us years to find these guys. There's yeah. 30 between us and where we started, so yep. we've got to check every one of the ones in between. Whereas mm-hmm. they they just go, oh yeah, we found. It's like they they took out how likely they were to find it and just said, oh, well, we're, we're trying to look for it. Look like we found yeah. something. And I'm like, ah, whatever. Did I'll they let, just I'll go let you to the have first it. address that he that he entered. Maybe, and that's the why I thought maybe it would make sense. Say, that... Or am I thinking of another episode? Yeah, you? You think it's yeah, a I'm different one. Yeah, yeah. There's an old, and this will be my one for this one, but there's an old Star Trek game and it's kind of, you're the commander of a ship and you have to travel around sort of, you know, quadrants of the galaxy where there's just like, and there's script come to the bottom and it just says time passes because you kind of, you have to wait for time to pass for them to travel to a certain location. Mm. And I feel like that's what you're talking about, Mitch, what they got rid of in this episode yeah. is the time passes. Well, I know, the deterioration kind of... of his mind and how quick he was doing his plan and enacting mm. his plan, like, there wouldn't have been that much time that passed. Like, there I would mean. have been There's, some time, but... There, there was none of that waiting around of having to search all those yeah. different planets and do all those sort of things where we're just waiting for time to pass yeah. for 20 teams to go out and explore those oh, different I'm, planets. I'm, yeah, I'm glad. Carter, I just, Carter it, goes, oh, yeah, we found it. We need to go to this planet. And I guess you got just as much chance of, you know, finding it as you do of not finding it on a particular other planet. Like they've all got just as much chance as one another. It was just... Mm. And it, I actually had forgotten about that entire subplot. They get yeah. to a... Yeah, me you know, too. They get to the, the pitch black planet, you know. Yeah, and uh, Yeah, it's pity that Riddick wasn't there. He would have sorted them right out, mate. Kill some monsters, <laughs> open up the gate. It'll, you know, we just need Vin Diesel, more Vin Diesel. Now, I do have something fun on that. If you freeze frame on the, the plans that Jack sends through to, like, how to replace the DHD, mm. he has all the information on how to do it. And in the very last line on there in his handwriting says, um, if <laughs> if this all fails, well, dot, 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 see ya. Oh, really? <laughs> that, he says that right down the bottom no there. Really? So that's the bottom line on the thing. Which makes it funny that when Sam finally gets back, she goes, these plans were brilliant. Who wrote yeah. them? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, who else is going to be that callous on there? And you're like, well, That's see ya. It. That was Walter. Cause that, <laughs> yeah, I, I'd forgotten about that that whole Carter side story as well because what she said, there's a second sun coming up. That's mm. why it was getting mm. hot. So they tried to manually dial, but it, it failed. And the DHD was stuck mid-dial. Yeah, so that's why they couldn't manually dial. So it's so the DH has the DHD stuck mid dial. Well, I think like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So no, ma- but like what so, they so couldn't imagine, press another button. Or? No, well, I think I think imagine if you press in your seven symbols and then press the red thing in the middle and nothing happens. Yeah. Normally the DHD will then reset and go dark. Right. Well, my thought is, well, okay, well that's all still lit up, but nothing's happening. Sure. So it's like mm. that's to me that was stuck mid dial. I think it was just a bit of MacGuffin to yeah write around the fact again very quickly that. Just accept the fact that Carter can't fix it. Jack's mm. got to fix it. Yeah. And that was just how they yeah. did that. And, uh, and yeah. to keep, I guess, keep it moving. Not that it's a rule that they could or ever should or will come back to, but the idea that if it is stuck mid-dial, that an incoming wormhole won't sort of reset it. Like if you're dialing yeah. a number mm. on your phone, someone calls you, based, that you know makes what you were doing yeah. you know relevant. Yeah. I, I don't know. And this is actually the first time we actually see two-way communication between an, an established yeah. wormhole. Yeah. Speci- specific, video. Specifically video. Yeah. You know, we have a, a live feed mm. of Carter on the planet. Yeah, that we, so we know that radio signals travel two-way, both yeah. in audio and, and visual mediums. Actually, be- And that becomes a very sort of relied upon uh, sort yeah. of piece of information. Yeah, which I was surprised forward. reading that too because I'm like, haven't we had that before? Because I know that we had Daniel leaving voice messages when he was in the in the sarcophagus, mm. losing his mind in episode mm. Need. But, yeah, but again, that, that was just him just dialing, leaving a message. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, no video. And then hang up, and yeah. and then, yeah. and there wasn't even a back and forward. Like Hammond didn't even really get yeah, a chance to true. reply to him. Daniel Two just way. went, yeah, mission complete, boom, and shuts it down. Mm. So, um, so yeah, and that's a, a very cool aspect that we'll we'll come back uh, time and time again. The, the one that made me laugh hard was Daniel just completely dogged the other scientists like on a couple of, couple of times. Oh, yeah. It's like, it means he had no idea what's going yeah. on. Yeah. And even poor Siler. Even he threw yeah, Siler like, under the bus What there. did I do? I'm just an engineer. Basically, sir, they have no idea. Because Hammond's like, did you understand any of that, Dr. Yeah. Jackson? He's like, they're idiots, sir. I'm like, oh, thanks a lot, Daniel. You f- <laughs> well, even when he said, uh, when Hammond's, you know, said to Carter, yeah, you can go to this other planet and see what's doing. And Teal's going to go with you and uh, in place of Jack is this other bloke that's going to go. And Daniel said, uh, sir, I think that if uh, Jack's going to stay here, I should also be here. Yeah. It's like, oh, uh, why? as well... They went I'm on the, a uh, long rant. Yeah, I'm the only. I hate basically, you, and it gets everywhere. It's so <laughs> yeah. coarse. Basically, I'm the only one that's got a hope of communicating with him. It's like, yeah, we get, mate. You're real good. Shut up. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> but can't he still write down? 
English? Yeah, yeah well, he was on the computer. Yeah. yeah. Need to go to Stargate, exclamation mark. Yeah. And Daniel's Shut like, up and get out. I was of... waiting there for two when he said that. Sorry to cut you off, but he's he said, uh, shut up and go away. And I was waiting for Daniel to go, he's talking about you, doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is going to translate? <laughs> apparently in, um, in interviews and stuff like that, RDA has said this is this is one of his favourite episodes because he had barely any lines yeah, he had to remember. So... And he was able to just concentrate on his... Because he was, as, as a young man, he was like a clown and a mime. He went to like circus school oh, wow. and was a mime and clown. School. So it kind of took him back to his days there where he yeah. was able to act without any words. Mm. So it was a quick day for him not having to memorise lines and that sort of stuff. And, and it was just brilliant because he was so emotive in his face. You could see the struggle and, and all that sort of stuff. It was especially it, the the line where it goes, "I need new location. You need new yeah. location." He's like, I don't, "He's just like, I don't know." Eagle, yeah. it's yeah. just what I. That's what I'm saying. Eagle, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Work why. it out, Doctor Genius. Yeah, but obviously, yeah. he's saying he needs to go to the to the other galaxy or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But that's what I love about this. It's so layered. How you come in and it, and you're right, it, Maddie. It's like he he knows where he's got to get to. And he's working things out the whole yeah. entire way, and he's saying everything he's saying got points yeah. to that direction. And then Carter going off world takes him away from making his ZPM, so he has to come back. That's yeah. right, I said ZPM, and, <laughs> and just that whole the whole thing is awesome yeah. with and his then, journey. And then in a, in a bigger sense, it's grabbing elements from Torment of Tantalus because this is kind of a yeah you know a sequel or uh, in Cloverfield Lane terms a blood relative to yeah. <laughs> to that episode. That's why I love that episode so much too, Torment of Tantalus. Yeah, but then mm. obviously the Asgard had nothing to do with the Torment of Tantalus except for seeing their little you know thing yeah. on the wall. So it's like it's bringing in the elements of you know Thor's hammer and Thor's chariot when Jack says mm. met them. Yeah, it brings in the Nox as well, though, and so it's bringing all these little tiny threads of all some of our favorite episodes. Yeah, yeah. and it's just tying in this beautiful bow but not ending the story you yeah. know by the Asgard saying you have the potential to become the fifth race you're just like let's get out to the next planet and <laughs> yeah. find some awesome yeah. shit yeah. alright let's go to the next episode quick <laughs> put it on <laughs> yeah um, I did find a couple of nitpicks though because I do like I do have a bit of a keen eye um, <laughs> thanks Daniel <laughs> <laughs> no, you but know, that, that speak, sorry, you know, speaking of that, I other saw one, some tiny writing and I thought that's <laughs> right. where, he's, he, where he dogged the scientists where O'Neill had the plans to get to Carter. And then Daniel goes, Here, deal with this, and puts it on the table. And they're like, What is it? And he goes, I don't know. But actually, I haven't got much of an idea, uh, but figure yeah. it out. It's like, <laughs> f off, you don't. Yeah, yeah. patronize me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 shit. You think much of an idea, you know that it's got a staff weapon energy thing in it, and yeah. that's it, mate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you got to press the button on it before. Not that's much, much of an idea. You, you know how to turn yeah. it on and off, yeah. and you know that... Yeah. You, you know I don't that know, but I'm friends with the guy who built it. Yeah. <laughs> All, all he knows is how to turn it on and off, and the fact that Tilks will be pissed when he gets back at his staff weapon. Imagine if they don't tell him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next <Go>. species. <laughs> Damn it, I could have killed a poppers. <laughs> Ends up just using it as a paddle instead. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so my couple little nitpicks oh, I spotted great. was when Sam is giving her report through the through the video feed, talking about how hot it's going to get, and she's tried everything she knows. And then Daniel plays that cassette tape, that classic old cassette mm. tape, back to Jack later on. It's different takes because Carter yeah, right. actually says more in one of them than the other. She says, oh, I've tried everything I know. Whereas in the other one, she just goes straight to talking about how hot it's going to be. So mm. that didn't, mm. quite, didn't quite match up. And then the other one is very early on uh, when they're having one of their first briefings and Jack is just sort of sitting at, at the desk and he's just doodling on the pad which turns out to be the plans for the, the ZPM sort of thing. And then as they go to release him, he kind of just, he, he makes a Rips meal out of tearing that piece of paper off and folding yeah. it, walking away. When he throws his pad down, you can actually see the exact same drawing underneath for, yeah. the, for the next take. So they've obviously that. printed oh, up Because right. obviously it's a, he yeah, has yeah. to tear it off. So they've obviously printed out a few of them, made them a <laughs> notepad. But he's thrown nice. it in the camera angles just off a little bit so you can see it. As he as he sort of tears off his piece and walks away, so he's got a fresh one for the next take with no tear marks or fold marks <laughs> in it. But other than that, I mean, this is friggin' flawless, absolutely flawless. The whole Doc Fraser thing was a bit strange for me because how many cat scans did she do of his brain? I don't know. Because it, it was almost like every second scene, she's got a new scan of his head. <laughs> <laughs> so like, well, we haven't even seen him in the machine yet, but she's like, oh, we've got these new results. And yeah. I'm like, but he's been doing so much shit. <laughs> and they... He hasn't got time. Yeah. He hasn't got time. He's never, he's never going <sighs> to listen to her. She goes, oh, I'll come do another scan. Okay, I'll I'm put down sure this giant cat battery. cat scans take ages too, don't and they? And they, 
Mm. <laughs> so, and they well, did... what do you want to watch a 24-hour episode of every <laughs> shit that he takes? And they did touch on that sort of, you know... I just know, don't see where the time was. That urban myth about, you know, you only use 10% of your brain. They, yeah. Did, yeah. they did sort of throw in a variation of that that was kind of Bible where they say you only use 10% at any given time yeah. right. and he's using 90% of his at any given moment, yeah. you know? Right. Which doesn't make sense in terms of when, when we were talking about before, the way he's like, he's thinking four and five steps ahead and thinking about five different plans at one time that are all going to kind of come together right yeah. at the end. He's yeah. got all these, you know, different irons in the fire. So I kind of let that slide, you know? What I appreciate about um, Richard Dean Anderson's performance is that in a lot of episodes, and even recently, just this season, where he's, you know, been pinned up against the wall or he's been infected by something, we're like, oh, RDA, he just wanted the week off, you know, yeah. or he's, you know, something's yeah. going on. So he's, he's managed to write himself out. This, like you said, he didn't have to speak a lot, but he had to act 10 times harder mm. because there were those moments where he's just sitting there just like a, hitting his own head and, yeah. and trying to explain something without actually being able to say it. And I'm like, oh, man, I, I actually feel how frustrated you are because... Yeah. I'm feeling frustrated as a viewer, but not negatively on the on the episode or anything like that. I thought it was really good. What the hell is going on with me? What do you mean? Well, apparently I have lost the philatus to speak properly. <laughs> that wasn't a joke. I didn't do that on purpose. That was an email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did definitely didn't do that. All those moments were just gold. I can't gush about it enough. Like, oh, actually, I want to know, Reese. Where do you think this is going to lead to? Like, what? Well, not so much. What do you think? But where? Where do you hope? Obviously, we want to be officially the fifth race. Yeah, yeah. At some point, oh, yeah, but... I don't see that happening anytime soon. But I just, I feel like the whole handshake thing is going to have the as guardians sort of keeping an eye on us. Like, okay, you know, we'll as like a little little brother kind of thing. Yeah. And I hope that it's like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll show you the right way or how to do things and and that sort of thing. Yeah, because it give did... you some sweet technology. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it does we all con- know we're too dumb to use it. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously the Asgard do confirm that the ancients were the gate builders yeah. and they left this galaxy long, long ago. Yeah. So there's p- the potential... Not to... before Daniel Jackson guessed that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Builder well, of roads. He found some tiny writing Romans. in... Gate builders. What? That's a huge That's jumping... That's a huge jump. Like, give your Adam West Batman discuss yeah. finding that shit out. Like, out of the what? Stargate computer. Yeah. But, yeah, so, you know, potentially the Asgard are, are kind of almost sort of semi-allies with us now. Like, he's... Yeah. We've met Thor, who we know is in our galaxy, you know, and, they, they, you know, he's obviously travelled to... What is it? The galaxy of Ida to, yeah. to the planet Othala to... um. Uh, to meet these Asgard and all the little ones poking their heads around the corner. Yeah. And I love the whisper, the whisper in the background when you hear them all going, yeah. <laughs> Were you underwhelmed about the location of the like the planet? Like the weird shaped upside down Asgard head? Hallway. Hallway. What do you mean? Not Was that really. an upside down Asgard head? Did you I like didn't... it? Oh, that's what I just pictured. It reminded oh. me... I just pictured... In my head, it's an archway. I didn't yeah. look that... For me, um, yeah, I, for me, it reminded me of Thor's... The shape of Thor's ship. Or oh, yeah. Thor's oh. chariot. You know what? Yeah. There was pretty cool. There was mm. one shot, though, when Jack is sort of, when he's been thrown through the gate down the stairs and he's sort of lying on the ground. If you look sort of in the background, you can kind of just see like where it's just been a quick slap render on the mm. wall and where it meets the studio floor. <laughs> and it's like, that's not the greatest spot to <laughs> showing that when you've got yeah. all this other cool stuff. Yeah. But obviously that was all like matte extension and CG, yeah. you know, stuff. So that would have been the expensive shot. Yeah. And obviously we've got, they've clearly obviously got two puppets now um, yeah. of Asgard. So that's yeah. what we've got because all the rest in the background were all sort of CG and all that sort yeah. of stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. They're but a- they, they do improve on the Asgard puppets. You never see the little the little glowy thing in the hand ever again. Oh, okay. But you can see you kind of had like little flipper fingers, like little fetus fingers that yeah. weren't like fully, de- fully developed. <laughs> yeah. Like a little webbing between them. And they do sort of end up giving them a bit sort of better fingers and, and stuff like that. I just love but, Richard um, Dean Anderson in this episode because even though you can write down like alien words to put in a sentence, but the f- way he delivers them so flippantly or like it's normal mm. was so good. Like, yeah. yeah. Kozos, Tilk. Benji Kozos. Benji Kozos. What? I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with that word, O'Neill. What, Kozos? Okay, what the hell is wrong with <laughs> 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 It's so good. That time again, baby. Oh, it's, it's time, time to find out if Reese has been paying attention. I All mean, right, so. if he hasn't been paying attention, I mean, what the hell else are you doing for this episode? Oh. The fifth race. Let's see if you can get five out of five for once. Let's see, eh? So, time starts at the end of the first question. Name the four alien races in the Great Alliance. Asgard, Nox, Ancients, 
For length. Correct. Nice. How many chevrons does it take to travel uh, to travel to another galaxy? Eight. Correct. What word in ancient does Colonel O'Neill call his legs? Kozars. Correct. Yeah. What alien what? race helped O'Neill in the fifth race? Asgardians! True or false? Usual 10% of the human brain function is a myth. True! Myth! Correct! Oh, no! He's done it, baby. <laughs> Holy Reese, sh- I don't want you to go. I want to be your friend. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> do, Daniel. <laughs> Everyone wants to be my friend. We finally got uh, to hear it after oh like a man. season and a half. Yeah, well done. Oh. I wasn't sure, and then when I got the Kozars thing, I'm like, that's right. got to be the hard- that's got to be so the hardest close. question. You're yeah. like. That was uh, that. That was the Mac- the MacGuffin of this episode. You're lucky I only it. said it five times just beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> I know, in my head, I'm like, oh, you just said it. <laughs> oh, I'm spent. Oh, that was good. Dang, hey, oh. best right. episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm not a failure. <laughs> Reese, I don't want you to go. Well, see, that's what happens when you get an episode this good. It's like everything just absorbs in, yeah. Yeah. like. And I feel like if, if you weren't an SG1 fan, this is an episode that will get you in. Like like Brendan was saying earlier, like his entire family would kind of just like yeah. just seagulling the TV, going, "Oh, what's going on over there? That looks interesting." Oh, what's... Ooh, the fifth race. It's like, and I feel like this episode for me definitely cemented me as an SG1 fan for life. The first time I saw this, I'm like, I'm in. Episode. All right, that is episode 36, the fifth race. Congratulations, Reese. Well done, buddy. Oh, well mate, done. I feel like a champion. <laughs> <laughs> what a great day. Next week, we are talking a matter of time. Almost forgot the episode there, but uh, yeah, that look, this one's very interesting too. Very, very sciencey. Very sciencey. It's a bit of fun, I think. You'll uh, you'll find Reese. So good times ahead. Join us next week for more Stargate Sundays. In the meantime, you can catch all of our podcasts if indeed you are on board Stargate because of the fifth race. Get into get in the gate because of this podcast. Go back <laughs> all of them on SoundCloud and iTunes to simply search for Get Into Gate. On both of them, you can find us on uh, the socials, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Get Into Gate as well, or drop us a line, getintogate at gmail.com. Send your congratulations on to, uh, to Reese, you know, for Ooh, nailing it. Send five nudes. Out of five. He deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> send your Asgard nudes. Yeah. <laughs> Individually, you can uh, find uh, me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Mitch underscore Lewis. Maddie. Uh, at High Pitch Maddie on Instagram. Brandon? At the Brandon Gibson on Instagram. And uh, Reese. I am at the Flying Gibson. Till next week when we talk a matter of time. Catch you then for Saga Sunday. Get into geek.com.